Hi, I'm Jim Kearns. Welcome back to our uh, examples in statics problems at Lawrence Tech. Uh, today we're going to look at finding the forces in the me certain members of the truss shown at the right. It's kind of a odd looking truss, but uh, we'll look at it and see what we can figure out. We'll use the method of sections in this case, since all three of those forces that we want to find lie across one section. So our problem statement is to find the forces in the members EF, EH, and GH. And, you know, obviously we can draw a section through there and find the forces across that cut line and that gives us everything we need. Okay. But before we continue, just a comment here. Um, I have a, a 700 Newton load here at point C, which acts down through here. This this member here from F to C is actually, in theory, a zero force member. And I did it this way to give you an example. Um, even though this is a, you know, according to our rules of analyzing trusses, uh, a zero force member, you wouldn't want to build the truss without that member because one of our other assumptions is this is just a pin down here at that joint. So if we had a pin there and this member was gone, um, we'd essentially be balancing our 700 Newton force on a pinned member and it'd just fall over, okay? So we need this element here from F to C just for structural stability, even though it's not carrying significant loads through the truss, okay? Uh, we wanted to find those forces. The obvious thing to do is the method of sections. Again, this is, you know, a way I would give you a hint by that I want you to use the method of sections if I give you forces and members that all cross a common section. We could use the method of joints. You know, we'd have to start here at a, and then we could find the forces at D, and then we'd find the forces at G, and then we'd find the forces at E, and, you know, that would, then we could find all of these. Um, that's kind of the long way around. So we'll, we'll use the method of sections. First step is I want to find the reaction forces, because assuming that this truss is stable, any sub part of that truss, if I just cut out this piece of the truss, is going to be stable, and we can apply our rules of statics. And so, but to do that, we need to know the force right here at A. So if this is 700 newtons downward, we're going to start by finding the sum of the moments about point B, and that will give us this reaction force over here at A. So if I say the sum of the moments at B equals zero, I've got my 700 newton force right here. It's pressing downward. That's going to give me a counterclockwise rotation around B, so that's positive. So I've got 700 and the for the magnitude and the distance, perpendicular distance between that where that force and apply is applied and point B there is three meters. So 700 times three, and then I have my force at A, which is 21 meters away, and that's going to be a clockwise rotation, so that's negative um, the reaction force at A times a distance of 21 meters. And if I solve that, I get my reaction force at A equals 100 newtons. And that's enough for me to continue with the problem, but as long as we're here, uh, when we do this, I'm going to do this both sections just to show you can go both ways and get the same answer. So let's find the reaction force at B as well. And we can do that from the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. And that's going to be equal to my 100 newtons at A uh, plus my reaction at B minus that 700 newtons downward. And so our equals 600 newtons and we can also see uh, from inspection there are no forces at all in the x direction so there's no external reaction forces in the x direction so the x direction forces at a and b are, are going to be equal to zero so here i've cut 
the truss into two sections. Um, we, I have you know, penciled in my, our reaction forces, and I've drawn in some assumptions about the forces at our section. I'm going to assume that, that EH across the top and GH on the bottom are both in compression, so they're both going to apply a force to the left here on the left section. And I'm assuming that, that EH, this diagonal, is in tension, so that's going to give me a force downward. And I did that because, obviously, if I just look at all the y-direction forces, I see that I've got an upward force, and I'm going to need a downward force somewhere, so I just assumed that. Okay. And on the right, you get to see the, the same, essentially the same thing. Uh, where my assumption of compression gives me a force to the right here, a force upwards there, and a force to the right there. So if we just start with our left-hand section, we can see that there's only two elements here where there's any vertical forces. One is the uh, 100 Newton reaction force at A, and the other is the force here on EH, which is on the diagonal. So I can do the sum of the forces in the Y direction equals zero, and that's going to be equal to my 100 minus uh, the force in EH, and this is, a, this is a 45 degree angle. They're all 45s from horizontal. Just the way I drew it, I didn't label it, but um, so I guess I'll add that in as I go. And in these sections here are all three meter intervals. I failed to mention that at the beginning. If you're wondering where some of these numbers come from, where they're going to come from. Um, so some of the forces in the y direction equals zero. So that's equal to 100 minus the force in E h times the sine of that 45 degree angle to give us the vertical component. And that leaves us with E h equals 100 over sine of 45. And that's equal to about 141 newtons. And that is in tension. OK. Um, I can do some of the forces in the x direction equals 0. And assuming compression, um, I've got EF, and that's what I assumed when I drew those arrows there, plus GH. Actually, that, those should be negative because if they're in compression, they're pointing to the left. So it's negative EF minus GH plus EH cosine, the X component of 45. Okay. And I've got two unknowns in there. Because I, I know E, H, I know that magnitude. I don't know the other two. So we're not quite ready for that equation. But let's jump down and so do the sum of the moments at some point. I could do the sum of the moments about point E here. Um, then I would only have one unknown. I'm going to do the sum of the moments about point H, which is out here somewhere. Okay, It's off my diagram. But that's OK, because the sum of the moments about any point in space has to be equal 0 for this to be an equilibrium. So the sum of the moments about point H equals 0. Um, and I pick that point because the force in GH doesn't cause any moment. The force in EH doesn't cause any moment. So I can ignore those. So I have the force from the reaction. It's causing a clockwise moment. So that's equal to minus 100 times 12 meters. And I have the force EF here, which is going to result in a um, counterclockwise moment. So that's plus EF times the distance of 3 meters. If I solve for EF, I get 400 newtons in compression. And I can substitute this back up into that equation. I now know EF and EH. All I need to find is GH. And I get GH equals my EH 
times the cosine 45 minus GH, and I plug in, not GH, EF. And when I plug those numbers in there, I get a negative 300. So that's negative. So my assumption about compression is wrong. So what I really have is GH equals 300 newtons in tension. And that's really, if you were thinking about a truss in general, if the loading is downward, the top of the truss is going to be compression. The bottom of the truss is going to be in tension. And the other members can be in tension or compression, depending on what's going on. So that's my answer for those three things. Um, there, there, and there. And uh, we'll now work on the doing it from the right-hand side. So here's the right-hand section. I've got my 700 Newton applied force there. I've got a 600 Newton reaction force. And then I've got the forces in the elements across the border. Here I'm assuming that, that EF, the top one, is in compression. And the GH is in tension, the bottom one, because that's a typical force for a section of a truss like that. And just looking at this, I'm also going to assume that the EH on the diagonal is in tension as well, because my net force is downward, so I need some net upward force. And I can do the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero to keep the whole thing in static equilibrium. So I've got my 600 Newton force from the reaction at B. I've got a negative 700 Newtons from my applied force. And then I have a plus EH times the sine of 45 degrees. That gives me EH equals 141 Newtons in tension, which is the same answer we had on the previous example. Now for the sum of the moments, I can't do some of the forces X yet because I don't have everything. I could pick a point off of my section like I did last time, but I'm going to pick H again because it's a point on my section. Um, when I pick H, this force GH, I don't care what it is because it goes through H. I don't so it's not in my equation. Same with this force here, EH. That doesn't contribute any moment, even though I know what it is. So my only unknown left then is the EF there that I need to solve for. So if I do the sum of the moments about H, I've got uh, it's equal to zero, and it's equal to minus 700 times this distance here, which is six meters from H perpendicular to the line of force there. And that's clockwise, so it's negative. And plus 600 Newtons, and this perpendicular distance here is nine meters. And that's counterclockwise, so that's positive minus EF, because it's giving me a clockwise moment, times this distance here, which is 3 meters. And working that out, I get EF equals 400 newtons in compression, same as the other side. And now I can do the sum of the forces in the y, or excuse me, sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero, and that's going to be equal to my EF, which is 400 newtons minus GH, which is still unknown, um, minus 141, the force in EH, times the cosine of 45 degrees. And solving that out, I come up with GH equals 300 Newtons in tension, which is the same answer we got before. So we can pick either side. We can go 
uh, you know, work from both directions. The thing to be careful, um, you know, if you're working with this right-hand section is, is don't forget to include this in all of your calculations because you have these two forces, two external forces to that truss that you have to account for. But other than that, that's all I intended to cover. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the flip side.